Good day, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the LEQ, the long essay question. Now, this is the type of essay you're going to have to write for both the big test in May and in class. It's a pretty simple essay. Just wanted to cover some of the basic characteristics of it so that when you have to write this essay, you're ready to go. Each time you write this essay, they're going to ask you to show off your AP skills. And these are them. Uh, there's really no particular order to them. They're also not even in alphabetical order. This is the one that just AP puts together. Uh, the first skill is content and sourcing. This is just knowing your material, knowing what happened when, what happened in what order. Comparison is always in line with contrast. Remember, comparisons are what similarities are there. Uh, it's always with contrast. It's always showing you know what's similar, what's dissimilar, what's like, what's not alike. Contextualization, that's the big picture stuff. When one event is happening, what else is happening in the rest of the world? When Rome falls, how does that affect China, for example? Synthesis is creating an argument from nothing. This is taking a fact that's given to you and running with it. This is your upper level thinking. This is the kind of stuff you're doing pretty frequently. Causation is the dominoes. You see one domino fall, it leads to something else. In history, we see one event happen, it leads to something else. Continuity and change, we're usually talking about a whole lot of years with these. In some cases, we're talking a couple of centuries. In other cases, it's an entire millennia. It's what characteristic has stayed the same or changed. With continuity and change, we're usually talking about political trends, economic trends, social characteristics, that kind of thing. Periodization is the different periods in world history. Remember, there are six of them. Periodization is basically just understanding the characteristics of each period and what defined them. And finally is argumentation. This is about creating an argument in a particular field and not just saying that you know, I'm right because I think I'm right or I like this idea. It's being able to accurately explain why you are correct. These skills are the bread and butter for any good essay. Now, you're not going to need each skill in each essay, but knowing what they are is going to be fantastically important. The rubric is broken down into really only three characteristics. Thesis, argument develop, and using evidence. We're going to talk about each of these on their own. The big thing to remember about an LEQ is you only have 35 minutes to write this essay. You can take more on the big test. However, in class, it's 35 minutes. Make sure you use your time wisely. Use your time productively. A thesis is a roadmap for what your essay is about. It's basically saying in one to two sentences what your paper is going to be about. If you want to do it in two sentences, those two sentences have to be back to back. They have to go together. The, for this reason, I recommend that you have just one sentence. It can be long, but it can be concise. If To earn a thesis point, the thesis can only be in two places, the introduction or the conclusion paragraph. That's it. It doesn't matter if it's anywhere else. And just because you have an introduction does not mean you have a thesis. Just because you have the last sentence or a topic sentence, that's not a thesis. Remember, your thesis needs to include any main ideas from the prompt and specifically what AP skills you are asked to use. With that in mind, let's take a look at some sample uh, prompts and see what we can come up with. This is a pretty sam simple sample prompt. Now, admittedly, this is not the kind of thing you're going to ever see at the AP test or even in class, but it is a good sample one for today. Over the course of your time in high school, a number of social characteristics have helped define who you are. From among those characteristics, compare and contrast the most significant one or ones. Now, whenever you get a prompt, the first thing I recommend you do is to underline, to highlight, to circle, underline, box the important criteria. Uh, that's going to help you immensely as the essay 
And in this case, these are our critical criteria. I mean, we've got a time we need to always have, time in high school in this case. Uh, the main thing you're asked to do is the social characteristics. You need to define what they are and how they defined you specifically. And then we've got a term, compare and contrast. That's the AP skill. Now, you can use these words verbatim. You can use them as they are. Or if you want, you can swap them out for other synonyms, other uh, metaphors, other words that mean the same thing. So like for compare and contrast, you could say uh, alike, not alike, similar, dissimilar. Uh, if it's high school, you could write secondary school. These are some of the basic ideas. Just be careful that whatever you use, if you're using a metaphor or a simile, that you use the right one. Otherwise, it's not worth a thesis and no point awarded. Now, I've bothered to take the trouble to write out a sample thesis for this prompt. And that's what the second bullet is right there. It's pretty simple. It's pretty concise. While in high school, my social characteristics have included comparative events I did with my friends, like cl school clubs, athletics, or extracurricular activities, and contrast events I did alone, like studying. Now see, in this regard, we've got the time period that happened, high school, we've got the social characteristics, we've got the ways that it defined me, and we've got both com uh, comparative and contrast events. Now, in this regard, I have two comparative events and one contrast event. Um, I recommend that you always have more than one option. If you have just one comparative or just one contrast and that one event is wrong, then we have to count the entire thesis wrong, or you might not earn that point at all. It it's a backup. It's, it's a safety net. It's easily doable, just takes a couple extra seconds to make sure you have it, and it can really save your bacon later on. Argument development is the second thing that you're scored on, and this you can get two points for. Uh, your first point is showing that you know the AP skill. Uh, that might be comparing, contrasting, continuation, changes, causation, whatever. You have to show whatever the skill is being used. And you have to show it concisely and specifically. Uh, AP does not like generalities. I'll get to that more in a second. Um, the second point you can earn from argument development comes from explaining the skill. For instance, if it's comparing and contrasting, okay, yeah, these two things are dissimilar, or these two things are alike, but why are they alike? How are they alike? From continuation and changes, wh how did it change? Why did it change? What is the event that led this to happen? The last thing you can earn points for is using evidence, and this is probably the most difficult two points to earn on an essay, but they're also the most rewarding two points you can earn in an essay. To get these points, you're going to have to use an appropriate amount of evidence per essay. The problem is you don't know how much evidence you need to have per essay. That number varies. You're never going to know it because, well, the number fi is figured out at the end of the essay, as it's a, uh, as all the essays are averaged together. Now, because you don't know this average, and it's going to vary time and time again, I recommend you aim high. It's always going to help you out to aim high. Um, to be honest, I recommend at least four pieces of evidence, and that's a bare minimum. Some of these you're going to need to really try to get it up to six or even seven. That that sounds taxing, and I know it is, but it might be the difference between getting a four or a five. If you meet the average pieces of evidence, you can earn up to two points. If you have at least one piece of evidence, but you don't get the average number of points you need, you will earn, you will earn only one point. The evidence needs to be specific. It needs to be very accurate. No generalities, nothing vague, 
nothing like, okay, we're talking economics, wow, everybody had a job, see, that's not going to work for it. It's not social, well, there were social classes, that's not going to work. Okay, what social classes? Politically, there were, you, you get the point. My final thoughts on this essay, if you struggle, don't panic. This is the first essay that we're going to start to see, yeah, they're difficult. You've never had to write something this complex that has to be both content-specific and technically proficient in a half hour. Remember your basic criteria. Stay positive. You'll do just fine. And that's all I've got for today. Hope they got something good out of this. Stay tuned. Next week, we're going to be taking a look at classical ages, specifically classical China. That'll be fun. And until then, take care.